Fashion Week draws to a close and the spring-summer season of shows moves on to Europe, it's not just the latest designer collections that have got the city talking. Away from the glitz and the glamour of the catwalk, not to mention the celebrities that populate the front row, Fashion Week means big business, not just for the industry, but for the four host cities. As the last seven days in New York have proved, Fashion Week has big revenue potential, with reach that goes far beyond the runway. Data from the New York Economic Development Council estimates that the biannual event brings in an additional $865 million to the city each year, with up to 232,000 attendees spending in hotels, shops and restaurants across Manhattan. There's almost a quarter of a million people who come throughout the year to New York City for Fashion and Fashion Week. That's a significant amount of out-of-town guests, and with that, they bring almost $900 million worth of economic impact in the city. That is huge, and in fashion being the second largest industry in New York City, it's important. City officials are only too aware that the media spotlight Fashion Week shines upon New York plus the big name sponsors that underwrite many of the events, is vital in terms of attracting visitors and their much needed spending power. Public tussling between Fashion Week calendar organizers in New York, London, Milan and Paris reached new heights earlier this year after scheduling clashes caused expensive logistical headaches for the editors, buyers, models and PRs forced to pick between two design houses and their show destinations. Look, we gave up on the scheduling conversation to be quite honest with you. Uh, at the CFDA, we listened to our members, we listened to the American industry, and they were saying that the schedule didn't work for them. It was too early in September and too early in February. So we tried with our counterparts in Europe to ship that back a week. And we had a little bit of progress, but the Italians and the French, they, they said to move farther back would impact their delivery into stores. But what are you going to do? It just seems uh, unproductive for four major fashion cities that all want to sell globally and have global and support global businesses not to have a global strategy around Fashion Week. In London, where Mayor Boris Johnson has unveiled plans to launch a London visa, making it easier for talented young fashion designers to stay in the capital after graduating from its art schools, steps are also being taken to ensure that the full profit potential of Fashion Week is harnessed effectively. After years of losing a series of young British stars to rival European cities, Caroline Rush, chair of the British Fashion Council, said during the New York shows that she and her co-workers are doing their very best to accommodate more fledgling brands in London who could significantly add to the industry's long-term growth story. Uh, we often get asked whether we can accommodate any more designers in London. It is a, a good problem to have, I think, is that I know that when the audiences come to London, they work really hard uh, to see as many shows as possible. And that's partly because we have so much incredible talent, right from the young designers through to, of course, the global brands like Burberry, Tom Ford uh, and Mulberry. And so there's a huge amount of content there to see. We try to look at different ways to be able to build in uh, different designer groups, whether it's presentations, installations, so that actually the audiences have the opportunity to get to see as many designers as possible. As in New York, the money brought into London via Fashion Week continues to be critical for the retail business. Brands estimate that the 58 catwalk shows and 5,000 trade visitors that make up London Fashion Week generate around £100 million worth of orders per season. As a retailer, what happens during London Fashion Week is that every other retail store in the world comes to look at your shop. So you want to be looking good during London Fashion Week and you want to be making sure that, you know, all the British designers are prominently displayed and you want to give opportunities to the British designers with installations, with windows, with things so that people see actually British fashion counts. You know, when I look around me now at the shows in London compared to 10 years ago or even five years ago, um, there is probably 50 to 70 percent more international buyers at the London shows. Some say the key to long-term success will be to assimilate more outsiders to the industry inside the fold for Fashion Week, be it digitally in the era of live streaming and Twitter, or with events encouraged to educate and generate profits 
from the brand halo generated by the event. Well, as we've seen London really go from strength to strength, we've seen the impact on the city, um, both in terms of uh, the amount of, um, of jobs that it brings, of the people that it brings to the city. So all of the additional spend is fantastic. Sometimes a bit of a disconnect between the consumer because obviously they don't have the direct access to come into the shows. Uh, we combat that in London. We have a consumer event that happens directly after Fashion Week called London Fashion Weekend. So it then allows them to come into the main venue and feel that they're part of that. All four host cities are constantly looking for ways to ensure that the power of Fashion Week isn't diluted and that their stars continue to shine. Despite rising costs, logistical headaches and the growth of Fashion Week in secondary cities like Cape Town, Copenhagen and Rio, it's clear that for many in this global industry, the shows must go on. This is Elizabeth Payton for the Financial Times.